Uh, our next guest on the telephone with us, he's Simon Saltzman. He's the president of the Outer Critics Circle. He's also a theater critic for CurtainUp.com and New Jersey's US1 newspapers. Hey, Simon, thank you for being with us. That's my pleasure. Finally connecting with you after all that phone business. Yeah, I apologize. I've, I've got you now on the phone. But I, I understand you want me to speak very, very quickly because uh, you're running late. Is that true? Yeah, not your fault. Totally, totally my fault. Um, okay. Well, I, was, I told you before that I was a little uh, stumped by this Best Actor and Best Actress category. They were, they were tough. I should have taken something much easier like the uh, Best Lighting or Special Effects. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, do you want me to just go through my little list here? Please do. I can do that. Well, you know, first up, you have uh, Brian Bedford. And, you know, undeniably, he's a superb actor. But, you know, give me a break. It's not a leading role. He's in two scenes. He should be in Best Supporting Actor. Lady Bracknell has always been a supporting role. And frankly, I'm a little sick of the of importance of being earnest. It's referred to as the greatest farce ever written. Mm -hmm. Everybody does it every year and everywhere. Enough already. <laughs> Now we're going to go on to Bobby Cannavale. He's so terrific in Mother blah, 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 with a hat. Yeah. I mean, he really throws himself into the role of this uh, ex-con, ex-druggy, ex-everything, who seems to be getting crossed, double-crossed by all his so-called friends. You know, this actor keeps getting better and better. And now we're going to go on to uh, uh, Joe Mantello. Well, what can you say about him? He's always been a great actor, then he was a great director, and now he's a terrific actor once again in The Normal Heart which may be one of the most impassioned, heartfelt plays of our lifetime. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, yeah I, I did and not see this revival, but I saw the Off-Broadway revival about six, seven years ago, which just knocked me to the floor. So absolutely. If this was it's, as it's, good. It always does. It always knocks you to the floor, but this is a wonderful, wonderful it's so, uh, revival, and it's so great to see it on Broadway. Now we'll move on to Al Pacino. Well, he was unquestionably brilliant in The uh, Merchant of Venice, which I consider one of the most despicable and deplorable plays ever written. Spoken I hate it every time I see it. Yeah. And I think uh, Pacino didn't change my mind. Hmm. And uh, so let's move on to Mark Rylance. Well, you know, he's the one to beat. He, I think he's going to definitely win for playing the, what, the drug peddling, boozing outcast of British society in uh, Jerusalem. Hmm. A really long play that wears at its welcome long before it's almost four hours are up. Yeah. But he'll win because we all remember his uh, tour de force monologue in La Bette, another penance that opened and closed rather quickly <laughs> earlier this season. A penance. I love that. A penance. You know, so, <laughs> so you think um, Rylance will win? And who would you vote for? Would you vote for Cannaval or... or um I would I would vote for Cannavale. I mean, he's dynamite. I mean, and, and we'll get you know. I'm not into the play category, but that it's so great to have a an edgy, exciting, original play like that's the kind of stuff we usually see off Broadway. And I'm thrilled that it's uh, got got to got to Broadway and it's uh, actually doing big business. That's wonderful. What a shock! I mean, the, the until the reviews came out, it was getting no business. Everybody thought it would close in a couple of days. I know. That's what I heard when, when I sat down at the press preview. Uh, they said it's supposed to close at the end of the week. Well, I'm thrilled that it didn't because it was it was great. Mm -hmm. Let's go on to the best actresses, okay? Okay. Okay. Now we've got Nina Arianda. Now she's the new hot number on the Rialto, as it were, and I guess she's getting as much press as Anthony Weiner. <laughs> sure, she's wonderful as the dumb blonde in Born Yesterday, but the comedy does not work anymore. Mm. She made her mark in Off Broadway in Venus and Furs. And the critics fell in love with her, as I did. Mm -hmm. They should have just moved that great play to Broadway. Wow. And I think despite Arianda Born Yesterday is dying, as it should, at the box office. Okay. Now, Frances McDormand, she was heaven as the Tusses nail Southie and good people. I think that's the performance to beat. I understand she's a tough cookie in real life. Mm. Freeheart, we all loved her at the Outer Critics Circle dinner, where she won for Outstanding Actress. Okay, well. Now, Lily Rabe. Well, she got through Porsche's, you know, and uh, the quality of mercy is not strained. She did it with sincerity in, in Merchant. But That's you not hate Merchant. You, you, you don't even want to talk about the Merchant of Venice. I can tell, Merchant, Simon. Right. <laughs> Merchant of Venice. And speaking uh, of... Uh, and then, and now uh, Vanessa Redgrave. Right. You know, I mean, she could read the proverbial uh, phone book and make it sound like great dramatic literature. I think she captured the attitude and speech of a southern matron as if she were Dixie Bourne and driving Miss Daisy. But I'm 
afraid she's a dark horse in this category. Okay. And let's see, we've got Hannah Yellen. Well, she certainly added much to the success of the British import brief encounter, mm -hmm. but I think she got lost in all that amazing scenery and special effects. Okay. So, so we've got that. Now, you asked me that about the, what I thought was really the best play, and I think I already told you. I think it was The uh, Mother with the Hat. Uh, certainly the most edgy and original and untypical play to get on Broadway in years. Wow. But I, would, I think I would give it a tie myself with good people. I, I love good people. I'm, I'm, I wish people would talk more about that one. I think that's a really good play. And as you oh, said, thanks to Mr. Yeah, hmm. just superb. You want to hear my worst? Sure. You have time for that? I think the worst play on Broadway this season was that championship season. That was such an overwrought, overacted piece of socially irrelevant claptrap. It should never have been revived. I think it was shockingly bad, almost in every department. Wow, I, I wouldn't go that far. But I, one thing that shot, that surprised me while I was watching it—I never saw the original production—but it, it's in two acts, and that second act just goes on forever. It was like an hour forever. and twenty minutes. Blah blah blah. It's boring as hell. And I mean, they got the, all these, you know, these this B list of actors. Uh, well, no, I, I thought Keith Bursley was just, actually they were very good all too. Of them. They were all awful. Every single oh. one of them. Oh, wow. No, I, I, I don't quite agree with that. But, but the one thing I did want to say is that someone told me that the original production was a three-act play. And in, in reviving it, they truncated, they sort of slammed together the last two acts. And I think that really, really hurt. I think it would have been a better evening had they divided it the way they used to. So maybe that, that's part of it. I think you're, I think you're right, it. but nobody can stand three acts anymore. Hmm. Yeah. It's very hard to sit through you know, the two intermissions. Well, Anyway, uh, the best off Broadway to me was... Uh, it was a toss between other desert cities, you know, John Robert Bates's plays, and Kin uh, by Bathsheba Duran. Hmm. I thought those two plays were absolute dynamite, and I wish they had moved. Well, I think other desert cities is coming to Broadway next season, I'm sure of it. Yeah, that's the rumor. That, that is coming. Yeah. I'm now, sorry. the worst show off Broadway was unquestionably the abysmally acted and staged Dracula. <laughs> it certainly must have made Bram Stoker turn over in his grave. <laughs> Uh, another, another bomb for that lovely theater, the little Schubert. And such a wonderful little uh, venue. Yeah, they got the, no the, luck. The last show that was there just a couple of weeks ago was this tuneful and fun thing called Lucky Guy. And it shuttered before word of mouth could get off, get it off the ground. So that was, was better than, than the reviews gave it credit for. The, you know, most of the reviews oh. were kind of eh, but you thought it was kind of cool. Was delightful. Oh, wow. I mean, had it opened earlier, would have, I think it would have went outstanding off-Broadway musical for uh, in the outer critic circle. No but, kidding. Uh, and the kid won that award, and that was deserved. You know, so I think we've covered it all, David. Well, Simon, I know, you... I know you're running late, and yeah. I like to chat more. But uh, you know, unless you have a specific question for me. Well, no. Well, first of all, I want to thank you so much, Simon. You've been absolutely so totally spot on and fun and funny. Uh, you're the president of the Outer Critic Circle. You're also still writing for Curtain Up and US One Newspaper. Um, right. And theaterscene.net. The, oh, well, that's right, theaterscene.net. So your, your right. work is all over right. the... How come you're no longer writing for TotalTheater.com, Simon? <laughs> um, uh, I'll tell you in private sometime. No, it's, it has nothing to do with you, nothing personal. I would love to do it. Uh, some editors and some of these uh, website people have uh, uh, problems with that, with, with the, uh, you know... Uh, with taking material that, that's exposure. published elsewhere. I got it. So I have to deal with, with that. You know, um, my newspaper in Princeton, they don't care. They're very, uh, you know, open and receptive to anything that I do. They just go for it, you know. But, uh, you know, the web, the web pages are a little peculiar. Well, Simon, they want it's... exclusivity. You know, you don't get more peculiar than me in my show, so, so I, I can, I can <laughs> okay. totally agree. Simon, it's been a pleasure. If get, listen, if I get fired, uh, you know, I'll, I'll certainly come back to you. So, oh, thanks. Thanks, Simon. I'm like sloppy <laughs> seconds for you. That's wonderful. Uh, All right. Always a joy, Simon Saltzman. Thank you my so pleasure. much for being part of the show.